Welcome back to Bad Attitude C10. All right, guys and girls, I'm going to try to explain some stuff today, and hopefully I don't confuse people any more than they already are. And by all means, I'm not a mastered mechanic or anything of that nature, and I was taught a lot of stuff by people that were just shade tree mechanics, and a lot was trial and error on my own. But I would like to try to clear up some stuff that sometimes is overlooked or confusing to people. So, here we go. When dealing with the small block Chevrolet, big block Chevrolet, and even the LS as we are doing at this moment, when it comes to installing our timing gears, the crankshaft gear timing mark will be installed at the 12 o'clock position. The camshaft timing gear indicator mark will be put at 6 o'clock. So if you pay attention to these next four pictures, this is a small block Chevrolet double roller timing chain. This is a gear drive on a big block Chevrolet. And then you can see the 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock positions and the dowel in the cam gear is always at 3 o'clock. There's nothing different between any of these. So let's see why there is a difference in TDC. So to get a little better understanding of what I mean by we're at TDC more than once, I was going to show you an illustration of a four-stroke engine. So on our first stroke, we're actually going to see the piston moving downward. The intake valve is open, the exhaust valve is closed, and this is when the cylinder draws in the air-fuel mixture. This will take us to the second stroke of our cycle, which is the compression stroke. At this moment, the intake and exhaust valves both are closed. The piston is traveling upwards to compress our air fuel mixture, and right before it reaches top dead center, the plug will fire, creating combustion. At this very point, we are at TDC cylinder number one on the compression stroke. This brings us to stroke number three, the power stroke. At this point, our air fuel mixture was combusted and the pressure generated is pushing the piston downward. Before the piston reaches bottom dead center, the exhaust valve will start to open. This brings us to our final stroke. So the piston is now moving upward with the exhaust valve open to expel all the gases into the atmosphere or out your exhaust, whichever way you want to say it. As the piston nears top dead center, the exhaust valve is closed or closing while our intake valve is starting to open. Now, this is going to be dependent again on the timing events of your camshaft and how much overlap your camshaft has. So now we find ourselves at TDC once again. In this case, the number one cylinder is at top dead center on the exhaust stroke. That leaves us with the exhaust, uh, the exhaust valve just closing or about to fully close near TDC. Our intake valve could be opening or already started to open depending on the cam specs and the overlap in the camshaft. So this is why you need to know if you're at top dead center on the compression stroke when both valves are closed or on the exhaust stroke when you could actually have both valves still open or the intake starting to open. So exactly where am I going with this? Well, it's pretty simple. So here we go back to our small block Chevrolet, setting our crank gear at 12 o'clock, our cam gear at six o'clock, and you can see the dial is located at three o'clock. The same way your manuals in most Chilton books or whatever you may be using is gonna tell you how to install your timing gears. If at this point you assume top dead center is on the compression stroke for cylinder number one, you would be wrong. So if you were to install your distributor at this point and pointing the rotor at spark plug wire location number one, your cam timing would be 180 degrees out. This can lead to popping, backfiring, spitting, sputtering, and basically it's going to run like shit if it even starts. So for those of you who have not already kind of figured this out or had a bell go off, what is the fix to this issue? Well, it's very freaking simple. We're going to rotate our crankshaft a 360 degree turn, and that will bring us to top dead center, cylinder number one, on the compression stroke. At this point, our crankshaft indicator mark is going to still be at 12 o'clock. Our camshaft indicator mark will also be at 12 o'clock, and if you notice the location of the dowel, it is now at 9 o'clock. 
this would be the orientation which on a small block Chevrolet or a big block Chevrolet you can now stab your distributor and it's going to be where it needs to be so at this point i know there's somebody out there saying okay well why not whenever the timing marks you're at 12 o'clock on the crank and six o'clock on the cam why don't you just stab the distributor point the rotor at cylinder six since it is on the compression stroke at tdc and then it'll be in time from there well that's just it it's that part is what confuses a lot of people because you're so prone to being taught hey your timing's always on cylinder one whenever you check your time with the timing light you're clipping on cylinder one and they just don't grasp it so to make it easier just rule that out rotate the engine 360 degrees put them at 12 o'clock 12 o'clock stab the distributor and be done i mean there's also people that tell you hey when you go to stab it instead of being directly at zero degrees some people will recommend that you actually stab your distributor at 10 to 8 degrees before top dead center i mean there's a lot of people have different methods in different ways and i'm just trying to share a way that's easiest and instead of me having to remember hey point the rotor at number six and stab it when the dots at 12 and six put them at 12 and 12 point it at number one and roll i mean it's easy peasy and it's pretty much foolproof now mind you all of you are like well why don't i just put it on my time and tab mark on zero and it's going to be at top dead center well seeing how your crankshaft rotates two full revolutions to one revolution of your camshaft you're actually also going to be at top dead center on your timing mark twice but it doesn't necessarily mean it's on the compression stroke and trust me guys i mean when i first started messing with this stuff i mean i stayed confused a lot and just asked a bunch of questions and i've had some old timers tell me hey the reason you line them up at 12 and 6 is because you can see the dots orientation a lot better whenever you're setting them at that ratio i've had one guy tell me oh the reason you set it at 12 and 6 is that way once you get it in time and you start putting your rocker arms on and preloading uh, your lifters on a hydraulic or set and lash on an exhaust since it's a TDC on the compression stroke for number six You set all the the valves that you can at that point you rotate it 360 degrees and now You know cylinder ones at TDC on the compression stroke when you finish setting all the preload or the lash on those valves You're actually ready to drop the distributor in so is it true? I, who knows man? It's just one of them things so to each their own all right, guys, I figured I'd pop this little picture up of a four-stroke going through the cycles uh, before we get into this next part. So, here we go. So, another issue that we can run across because we assume that just because the number one piston is at TDC that it is on the firing position or compression stroke is when we go to set our valve lash or preload on a hydraulic setup either way whichever one you may have if we have the number one piston up and it is not on the compression stroke that means when we start setting the valves kind of like in this illustration here it says the number one piston in the firing position you can set all the valves that are highlighted in yellow now this is because at that time the lifters are on the base circle of the camshaft you're not going to have any spring tension on the rockers or anything like that so if you get to zero lash and then set your preload on the hydraulic setup or if you get out a filler gauge and you start uh, setting the valve lash on your side lift you definitely know that whether your flat tap lifter or your roller lifter is on the base circle and there is no load being put on it at all now if you assume that you're on the compression stroke but technically you're on the exhaust stroke the the blue highlighted valves are the ones that would actually be on the base circle so if you're setting the yellow ones when the blue ones are on the base circle that means the yellow ones you might be setting they could be on the ramp or the side of it starting to open they could be on the back side not all the way closed they could even be on the tip and have you know complete valve lift and if you do this i assure you your settings are going to be incorrect so just be sure you pay attention to the details whenever you're messing with your timing and don't assume just because your number one pistons at tdc that it's on the compression stroke 
Now, guys, when dealing with an LS, things get kind of really shaky because this is where you're going to have people come out of the woodwork saying, oh, you can just set them. They're torqued. As long as you already know the push rods are what they need to be, you just torque them down to 22 foot-pounds, and they're going to be where they're going to be because torque's not affected. Well, I mean, you basically need to look at this from the standpoint of why would GM put the following in their manual? It states that what you need to do is rotate the can <laughs> I'm sorry, rotate the crankshaft until the number one piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke. In this position, cylinder number one rocker arms will be off lobe lift, which means they're going to be on the base circle side, and the crankshaft sprocket key will be at the 130 position. The engine firing order is 18726543. Cylinders 1, 3, 5, and 7 are on the left bank. Cylinders 2, 4, 6, and 8 are on the right bank. Now, mind you, the cylinders are uh, the same as the small block and big block Chevy as far as orientation, but the firing order is different so be sure you use the right sequencing now when the engine in the number one fire positioning is set you can set the following rocker arms that are on this chart so the exhaust valves that are listed for one two seven and eight you can set the intake valves on one three four and five you can set at that time after this you rotate the crank 360 degrees and then you can tighten the valves that are remaining now a lot of people again are going to be saying hey they're torque you don't have to worry about adjusting as long as you know the push rods right they have proper preload you just torque them down and let them go well the other thing you have to understand is on a factory camshaft or a small cam that might be a truck cam or just an rb if you want to consider an rb cam you can might still be able to get away with that but guys Think about it. When you're torquing a bolt, you're actually stretching it. You're, you're loading it up. So if you're just flying through there and you're adjusting rocker arms, whether it be a hydraulic roller or if you buy a mechanical, and it's not on the base circle and you're on a portion of the lobe and there is some lift involved, if it is actually preloading the lifter on a hydraulic and then starting to try to fight spring pressure and these springs are for a 650 or a 660 lift cam instead of something that's you know barely at 500 spring rates way more so in addition to the stretch that you're doing on the bolt which is your actual torque factor if you are having a spring resistance to it which i understand again people are going to say hey torque is torque 22 foot pounds is 22 foot pounds but guys you got to think if there's added spring pressure given resistance to the rocker arm it can be improper it might still be tight and it might make the torque wrench click but is the bolt technically stretched to that point and a lot of people get away with doing stuff like this because they're like oh well they're so forgiven you can have preload from 50 thousandths to 100 thousandths or 50 thousandths to 80 thousandths or 60 to 120 whatever you know it may be and whatever brand lifter they're running but the other thing you have to uh, understand is this bolt is being torqued and tightened into an aluminum head so you can also risk you know the chance of pulling the threads out of your head there's a whole lot of things and we're going to get more into that in the next video when we finish installing our camshaft and i will show you how to uh check or set the valve should i say in the sequence that is provided here right now on the screen and then i'm also going to show you a method that i prefer over any other method and i've done it forever uh small block chevrolet big block chevrolet pontiac i mean you name it i've used it and it's felt uh, pretty much foolproof is the best way to say it so thanks for watching and until next time see you later